So what we have here is the Savota Havu 4 with the uh, elderly Savota Havu stove. <clears throat> and um, yeah, there's something special about the winter setup. And um, you have to think that the snow underneath my foot here is a good 40, 50 centimeters. So um, these tents are quite small. There are a couple of special things in this winter setup. I will explain the reason for these sticks um, under the straps and also some of the little design things inside. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> since the snow is so deep and the space in the tent is relatively small, the snow can be nicely utilized to design, let's say, furniture or a platform inside the tent. Um, and I will open the tent soon and then we can go inside. I first want to have a little walk around, show you something on the other side. And that is up there, a little solar panel. And uh, that is connected to a power bank slash light inside where you can charge USB stuff or you can have light in the in the tent <clears throat> so you can see like usually this would be the angle now right the issue is that the anchor points the ropes are anchored uh, also very nice i could make a video about making these snow anchors um anyhow the the uh, snow anchors they are so deep they're not on ground level like usually you would have the bottom of the tent and the tent peg both on ground level and now this anchor is in the snow that affects the angle here right so this goes much steeper down and it doesn't tension this one up which is a nice thing on the havu tents that you do not need these side poles and you still have side walls um, that however is depending on the angle that meanings uh, means also the length between the tent and the, the peg or whatever anchor you have so <clears throat> the angle is affected by this and to keep this one in a nice angle keep the walls up um, I added just these pieces of firewood here um, or some sticks there and <clears throat> then um, the sides can be kept up so this is one special thing also there are snow flaps under here that um, are connected to the tent that seal the tent somehow um, to the ground and I'm opening the entry now and compared to the Havu 8 that I own um, this Havu 4 I hope the new Havu 8 also has this I guess they do um, something that I have been uh, sending feedback to Savotta about so Often forgets that shaking off the snow is so much easier also pushing it down from outside when removing snow from a tent it's important that you don't just remove it from the tent but also away from the tent because then you can still later dig out your tent because it will be otherwise iced and especially when you walk on this it's really iced in so one change so what they made they made a much bigger zipper here I still would prefer a two-way zipper so that you can open a bit here so one more slider and yes I want to please add one more slider so you can choose and juggle a little bit and be more flexible um, yeah something else about the Havu so this has changed already. and please like I mean with always with the zippers even with big zippers love your zippers they are expensive things hard to make yourself almost well, impossible to make yourself i think uh, and sometimes a bit of work to replace so it's not impossible it's when you know some sewing you can do it easily i've replaced so many zippers in my life but anyhow zippers break when the coil here you see this this coil 
if the slider is abrading the outside of the coil, then the zippers break. The slider will fit more too loose and then won't be able to push the two sides, the hooks, into each other anymore. So, and the slider being often of metal and the coils made of plastic, so there's a hard on soft and of course it is abrading. So whenever you open a zipper like this, I don't even want to do this, right? If you pull a zipper open like this, you create more friction. Also, when you close the zipper and the two sides are far away from each other, no matter if it's a jacket or a tent, especially when it's a backpack, that's a really bad one. So, um, closing zip backpacks under tension is, is a zipper killer, right? Opening the, ripping them open. And then Savota has this very nice edit also, which is something that I have added on my other tents, some string so that you can roll up this um, jeans this is a bit frozen like there are these flaps two flaps hanging in here and these two flaps they avoid um, they kind of catch heat so when you open the door the heat is not escaping and also when you open the door light doesn't shine out from the tent so but now i want some light inside because as you can already see here and there's a platform for sleeping. I try to get some more light in there with my headlamp. Wait a moment. I don't know if you can see. There is isolation mattresses laying there. There is the stove with some firewood. And as you can see here, the entry is dug out so that um, the snow can make a nice platform so it's nice to sit here and cook and you have a bit more head space when you are in this area here getting in and out makes it much easier to get in the tent you have space when you come in with a backpack or something um, and also this platform there is something very special you need to think when you build these platforms right when you come to a place the snow is soft so you sink in um, so the thing that you usually do if it's or i usually do for if it's a short night no matter if it's a tarp or even under a hammock i compress the snow with the skis the first thing that i do when i arrive when the snow is compressed i let it harden out and then at some point it makes it possible to walk on that snow without skis which is nice when you are in camp um, or you can even knee down. This one here, because it will be exposed to the heat of the stove, here it is important to not only compress the snow, but actually mix the snow nicely before you compress it. So you take the uh, shovel, um, take the skis off, and you mix the snow really, really nicely in that area where you want to have the tent. Usually I make a bigger area. So here I also made the area around the tent, compressed it, a nice circle so that you can walk also outside without sinking in <clears throat> um, and don't have need to have uh, snowshoes or skis and so the reason for mixing this layers of snow different age of snow uh, together is that snow of different ages has different crystals it has fallen at different temperatures different um, even wind speeds moisture content in the air um, like different sizes like all the crystals are different depending on so many different like temperature for example and um, <clears throat> and snow from different like different snow con connects better to each other than same snow so you have you can see this even like you have these very top layers where snow has just fallen and this is quite loose snow when I look at the mixed snow here this is much much harder and this platform I want to be as solid as possible so that it lives quite long that it doesn't melt away from the stove so much and maybe you can see there there's a piece of like aluminium folio that I put there as a reflector to radiate heat a little bit away from that snow wall um, and um, protect it to live it make it live longer because this tent I set up for um like a more permanent use it's like a tent that visitors sleep in and it's a tent where um 
one friend is spending a lot of time also who is living in Yuensu, so it's a bit of a second home. Um, and yeah, the stove is quite good for this size of tent, but that's about the maximum. I tried other stoves, like I put the G stove in here and another Russian stove that I once found on the flea market. And they're like even for the Havu 8, they're a really good size, but for this one, they are too big or the shape is inconvenient. Like the G stove reaches in it, it takes space. The Havu 4 is quite small um, for two to three people in a winter trip with a stove. I think it's really ideal with four people. Uh, you would need to leave some stuff outside and really think if you want to use a stove. So. Yeah, Havu tents, quite amazing tents, um, extremely satisfied and um, like I, it's it's a very nice tent for groups. So I switched the, um, you know, like the camera, so yes, so now you can also see the Nomad down here, where is this light on? No, yes, I think it is, yes, now it's off. So you can see a little bit this project. This is the Nomad Town, a resilience hub in the subarctic of Eastern Finland. <clears throat> and what we do here is we explore what is enough. <laughs> we explore what is enough. And I can tell it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Like a sufficient amount of challenges for sure. But it's really, really nice to be able to, I don't know, understand your life and the benefits of building communities and living off-grid, um, being more resilient. They are just overwhelming. Um, this is the, the yurt where I mostly live in. Um, then we have a summer kitchen over there. In the moment it's the winter kitchen. Uh, you see some this house behind me is not in use. There's a little sauna building. These are buildings that were on the land that I'm renting here. Over there you can see in the sun the trampoline greenhouse that will get plastic added soon. Um, greenhouse frame, yeah, so. And you see it's um, April, beginning of April. German overshoot day, embarrassing day for Germany, <laughs> or a sad day, tragic um, for the for all of us. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm also now thinking to add some more thoughts, but maybe those are for another video. So um, please take a look. I'm going to talk about um, ways we can proceed, ways that are beneficial, ways that are possible approaches, mindsets, um, guiding questions in life that um, can navigate us to the times where actually the survival of our species is uh, at stake. So yeah, please have a look at my channel. Thank you for subscribing. I've been celebrating uh, some time ago 500 subscribers. Um, really happy about this. So. If you like the content here, if you want to see more of this, if you um, have questions or comments or want to um, learn more and give some questions to thought, um, please post them in the comments and yes, have a really, really good life. Enjoy yourselves and take good, good care of yourselves and life in all its diversity. <laughs> good times. <laughs>